In this example, we're going to construct a system that behaves as a modulo 5 counter. A modulo 5 counter is similar to an ordinary counter, but the difference is that it only has five different states. So when we count upwards and we increment, we go from 0 to 1, to 2, to 3, to 4, and then after 4, we go back to 0. So mathematically, which we will talk about later in the course, 4 plus 1 will be equal to 0, modulo 5 in this case. So this modulo 5 counter that we are going to realize has two inputs. One input is called count and one input is called u slash d. And the behavior is as follows. So if count is zero, it does not count at all. And if it is one, it will count. So you can call this an enable signal. So it says if it can count or if it cannot count. The other input signal is u slash d, which is 1, then it adds a 1 to the result, and if it is 0, it will subtract 1 to the result. We can note here that there is no explicit output, so we can see the output kind of as the state. So if we want to specifically extract an output, we can do that through the state, but we will not define the output explicitly here when we solve this uh, problem. Here is a summary of what will happen in our counter. So if we have the input signals count and u slash d, if they are 0, 0, and we are in the state q, we will stay in the state q. Also, if it is 0 and 1, and if we are in the state q, we will still stay in the state q. And both of these, because the count here is 0, so we don't, do not count in our counter. On the other hand, if the count is 1, we do count, and u slash d will say in which direction will we count. So if we have a zero in the u slash d input, we will count downward. So we'll go from the state q to the state q minus one, modulo five. And modulo five here then just means that if we are in state zero, we will get, go to state four. And if count is one and u slash d is one, it means that we count upwards. So if we are in state q, we will go to state q plus one and again modulo 5. So if we are in state uh, 4 and we count upwards, we will go to state 0. So our input set here in this problem is defined as 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. Where we just arbitrarily say that the first bit here comes from the count input and the second bit comes from the u slash d input. The state set here is just how far are we in our counter, or what is the state of our counter. So we can call this s0, s1, s2, s3, and s4. There is no output explicitly defined in this problem, but what we have left in our state machine is to define delta, which is our state transition function, and we also want to define lambda, which is our output function. And these functions we typically define using our state transition graphs. So the state transition graph for this problem we can draw in the following way. We have five different states, S0 to S4. What we want to do now is that for each of the states, we want to define what happens for each of the possible inputs. So we can see that if we have the input 0, 0 or 0, 1, we will always stay in the same state because the first 0 here means that we are not counting. So here all the st state transitions will be going back to the same state as they were coming from. Then when count is 1, we go either forward or backwards. So we can see from the table here that we go forward in the case where we have 1, 1 in our inputs. So here we just step one state forward if we have a 1 
and that is done in the same way for all the states that we can be in. And similarly, if we have a 1 and 0, we will go backwards in our state transition graph. So we have 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, same for this one, and also from S2 to S1, we will go back with the input 1, 0. So this state transition graph will define our state transition function and in some sense also our output function but here we didn't define any outputs uh, so we cannot see it explicitly here but we could say for example that our states will be will be representing our output now let us try to go one step further and actually go one more step towards realizing this as a digital circuit so the first thing we want to do then is to do what we call a state assignment. So we need to call the state something because S0, S1 and so on, that is not really a digital system. What we want to have is a digital system. So we can do this kind of arbitrarily. Previously we could use 0 and 1, but that is not possible when we have five different states. We cannot even use two bits, so we need to use three bits in total here to do our state assignments. And here we can say that S0 is 0, 0, 0, 0. S1 will be represented as 0, 0, 1. Then we can call this 0, 1, 0. And we can call the next one 0, 1, 1. And the last one we can call 1, 0, 0. So this is our state assignment for this problem. In order to write our truth table for this, we need to call the different bits in our state assignment something. So we use Q1 for the first one, Q2 for the second one, and Q3 for the third one. And what we want to do now is to define the next state, which depends on the input and the current state. So the current state we can say is Q1, Q2, Q3. We also have the inputs, which is count, that we can write as a C, and then we have the U slash D, which we will just write as a U here in our table. Then we have the outputs, and the output here will be the next state. So the next state will consist of three different parts. So we have Q1 plus, we have Q2 plus, and we have Q3 plus. And what we want to do now is just to enumerate all the possible combinations that we have for the inputs which are Q1, Q2, Q3 and C and U. So here we have 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, then we have 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 and then writing these a little bit faster we get So now we have enumerated all the possible inputs that we can have and note that we didn't enumerate all the combinations of the uh, five bits that we have here but only the combinations that actually can occur. So if we start writing the function for the next state what we have in the first row here is that we are saying that we are in the zero state which is S0 and we get zero zero as input for C and U, which means that we are staying in the state 0, 0, 0. The next one we get the 0, 1 as input from the same state, and we stay also in this state. Now we get a 1, 0 uh, as input when we are in state 0, which will mean that we go to the state that we call 1, 0, 0, because we are in state S0 and we go to state when we go backwards here and then if we have a 1 1 as input instead we will go forward which will give us 0 0 1 now we do the same thing for state 1 which is represented as 0 0 1 so here for 0 0 input we stay in this state and also for the 0 1 input we stay in the same state and then we can just fill out this uh, by looking at our state transition graph. 
And now we have filled out the complete truth table for our functions that are Q1+, plus, Q2+, plus, and Q3+. Plus. Our next step is to actually realize these functions, but that will be done later.